Hi everybody, this is Joanne and when I was a young girl, naturally, I read a lot. I loved my Trixie Belden series. Um, because there weren't a lot of science books available, I was a bit relegated to reading Encyclopedia Britannica for my science needs, my science curiosity, and I'm really glad I did. Anyway, so uh, today I want to go through some recent releases in children's books that you may find of interest to share with some children you have in your life. So, as we know, kids always have a lot of questions, and so to set up a book in such a way with questions and answers will often be quite appealing. So in case your child ever wondered, do cow farts cause global warming? And what do people taste like to sharks and tigers? I have a couple of books that aim to answer important questions like that uh, by Glenn Murphy. And his first book is called, Why is Snot Green? and other extremely important questions and answers. His second book is called How Loud Can You Burp? And uh, they're both in the same sort of format, questions, answers, little tables, drawings, uh, just to hold the attention of children from ages eight through 14. I recommend those. Uh, the next book is written by an author who's really good at making the world of quantum physics and astrophysics accessible to the general public. And this is Marcus Chown, who's written a book I especially like called The Quantum Zoo. He's written a book for young kids, maybe about ages 6 through 10 or 12. That depends on the reading level of your, the child. But it introduces children to wormholes. And I didn't know we could start doing that at such a young age, but why not? He's written a little fictional story called Felicity Frobisher and the Three-Headed Aldebaran Dust Devil. So this little dust devil comes from another planet and just wreaks havoc in Felicity's life, but also gets her out of trouble sometimes, too. It was a good read, and I hear he's writing a follow-up, and I definitely want to get a hold of that because I enjoyed this one, even at my age. <laughs> so I'm recommending that book. Another astronomy book aimed at uh, very young children, I'd say two, three, four, five, six years old, would enjoy this book about our solar system called Little Moon, written by Stuart and Nicola Clark. This book was darling, and sometimes I'll, I'll test these books, not on two and three year olds, but on my teenage daughter and her friends, and this book was just so darling, it just elicited, oh, how sweet, how cute, and it really is a really cute story of how the moon found its home with the earth, so obviously fictional, um, but it's very, very darling, introduces children to all of the planets of the solar system. I like this one too. Okay, The next book has a story behind it. I went up to Michigan and I was able to give a little uh, brief talk at a bookstore and a mom came up and said one day her five-year-old son said, wow a lot of scientists worked on the space shuttle and the mom being an engineer said well well of course it was scientists and engineers and her son said no, no, just scientists. And that prompted her to uh, make a book about engineers, what engineers do for uh, very young children. And she came up with this book called Engineering the ABCs, How Engineers Shape Our World. And it's aimed for children ages four through eight. Wonderful drawings and each letter of the alphabet uh, discusses a different aspect of engineering and I think that's really important because she, as she pointed out to me, people know a lot of famous scientists but they don't know a lot of famous engineers. So I think she's definitely filled a niche with this book. I really enjoy it. Okay, the next book is by author Annie Crawley who is an undersea photographer and she um, is really into motivating kids into being the best people they can be and she does this through her beautiful photography, her DVDs, her books. Um, very excited about this uh, book and she's coming out with more. This one's called Ocean Life Book and DVD from A to Z, another A to Z book. It comes with a DVD which I took out because I had to watch it. It was very exciting. I, beautiful work, I'm telling you. And this book just introduces uh, children to the ocean uh, alphabetically and definitely good sound uh, background science. Uh, so her books, um, you can find them by visiting diveintoyourimagination.com and probably elsewhere. Okay. 
Now we're moving up to two books that are aimed for older children. Uh, the first one uh, was quite a surprise and definitely fills a need uh, that hasn't been answered before. And this first book is called uh, Evolution by Daniel Loxton, How We and All Living Things Came to Be. First of all, what's amazing about these book, this book is that these drawings were drawn by the author. Every single one. And amazing. I just was in awe of the uh, artistic ability. But this book is broken up into smaller page, one page, two page chapters that explain how evolution happens, how does change happen over a period of time, how do animals adapt and what does that mean for the world. And then common questions that are asked by people who do not believe evolution is how species have adapted over the years. So I, I just, and it does have a, a question and answer section. People make it sound like evolution explains where life came from. Is that true? How did life get started in the first place? And uh, questions like that, it really well thought out book. Um, I appreciated it. I think it would be a good introduction for uh, not just children. Um, I'd say uh, we're aiming at ages 11 through 15, 16. It just really depends on where you're at in your understanding of evolution. This one is a worthwhile book to have on your bookshelf for children. Okay, and my final book for today um, is by Kate Jackson, and I've reviewed a book of hers before called Mean and Lowly Things about her experiences in the Congo. She's a herpetologist, and her I loved her book. I did love her uh, little memoir book. This book she has written for kids is called Katie of the Sonoran Desert, and it's also got a counterpart. Um, it's equally in Spanish and in English. Spanish is not one of the languages I speak, so I'm not even going to pronounce this. But it talks about uh, the snake named Katie um, and her life in the Sonoran Desert, and also about the scientists who help study um, for, uh, snakes in this uh, um, climate. So um, what I love about this book it really is uh, amazing. This part is written in English. This part is exactly the same thing, written in Spanish. So here, these beautiful drawings by um, Natalie Rowe really add to the book. So again, we're looking at this is in English, this is in Spanish. I did not find this to be a distraction at all. And I appreciated what I learned about snakes uh, through this book. Um, so if you have a child who is interested in nature, um, I am recommending that you also pick up this book because it, it was just a fascinating look at snakes. So those are just a few of the books you can find for children now about science. There are a lot more, but these were ones that um, I found particularly interesting and I would recommend any of those. So thank you very much for listening and have a great time reading those books. Okay, bye.